Today, the topic is the dissimilarities between Fisher's and Cambridge approach to the quantity theory of money. It says that in spite of the common similarities and similar conclusions, we discussed in the previous video that there are so many common conclusions between the two theories and there are various similarities also. In spite of that, both these approaches have some notable differences. We shall discuss a few of them. So we will be discussing the difference between the two theories. Point number one is the relative stress of supply and demand for money. See, now the Fisher's approach stresses on the supply of money. The main focus, the main stress is on the money supply. Whereas in the Cambridge approach, stress on the demand for money to hold cash. Uh, you must have seen the relative uh, explanation for both these approaches in my previous videos. So the difference which we are stressing here that Fisher's focus is on the money supply and Cambridge School of Thought focuses on the demand for money to hold cash. How much people want to hold the cash back for transaction and precautionary motive. So the difference lies here on the supply and here on the demand. Next point, the difference is the definition of money. In Fisher's case, emphasis on the medium of exchange function of money. What is more focused in Fisher's approach is the medium of exchange function. Money is used as the transactions. What money are you using it for? Transactions for goods and services. That is the emphasis of Fisher's approach. And Cambridge approach, they lay more stress on the store of value function of money. They are not concerned with the transactions which are happening. They are concerned with the money which is held for non-transaction purpose. The money which you don't spend on transaction of goods and services, that is our focus in the Cambridge approach. Next point. Flow and stock concepts. Now in Fisher's case, money is a flow concept. Money means flow of money expenditures. How much money you have, you are putting it in the flow of the transaction of goods and services and you are spending it. So this is the concept of money in Fisher's approach. Whereas in Cambridge approach, it is not a flow concept, it is a stock concept. Money means given stock at a particular point of time. At this moment, how much money has the public holding in their hands. How much money the public has kept in their hand is our focus. So we are stressing on the stock concept and these people here they stress on the flow concept of money. Next point transaction and income velocities. Now see in Fisher's case stress lies on the significance of transaction velocity of circulation that is capital V. It lays, it, it just revolves around the transaction velocity. How much money is being spent on the transaction of goods and services? That is the V, money velocity. But in Cambridge side, the stress is on the income velocity. On the part of income which is held in the cash balance, that is K. So where we are laying our stress in Cambridge approach, that part of income which is held as cash which is called capital K. Here we are uh, more focusing on the transactions, that part of income which you are spending and here that part of income which you are holding back as cash. Next point, factors affecting V and K. Now what are the factors? In Fisher's case, we will discuss the V concern about the institutional and technological factors governing how fast individuals can spend their money that is V. Now if you date back to say 10 years back uh, there was less of technology and less money was spent on technological factors. You people never used to spend on phones, laptops but now with the technology developing in the in this recent 10 years, everybody spends on their smartphone, everybody spends on the laptop. So here we are, we are just concerned about how can people spend more money on, we will be concentrating on the institutional and technological factors so that they spend more and more of their money, which is called increasing in V, right? And in Cambridge case, concerned about economic factors determining what portion of their wealth 
the people desire to hold in the form of cash that is how will our k increase so in cambridge school of thought we are not concerned with how will we increase the spending capacity of the people what factors will be required to hold their cash back is our main point of concern so the difference lies between the factors which affect v how will the spending increase and the factors affecting k how will the money in hand increase next point is the nature of p now in fisher's case p is price level obviously it is the average price level of all the goods so when we talk about capital p in fisher school of thought it is called the average price level of all the goods but in cambridge case p is the price of consumer goods so another difference which we discuss here is the nature of p in the two schools of thought next the relationship between m and p money supply and the price level in fisher's case any change in money supply produces proportional changes in the price level if money supply changes automatically price level will also change velocity and real income are in the long run independent of each other so fishers hold the view that if money supply changes automatically there will be proportional changes in the price level and in the long run when we talk about the long run statement this velocity and real income they are independent they are not concerned to each other now in cambridge case what happens price level may change by more or less than money supply it depends upon what happens to the stock of non monetary assets their expected yields is what upon the desired cash balance depends so here what we discuss is these non monetary assets stock will they increase or will they decrease and what will be the yield what will be the return on these assets their expected yield is the focus on which the cash balance with the people will increase or decrease how much return will your assets give you this will tell whether the people will hold back more cash or less cash it depends upon the return of these non monetary assets next point different approaches to the money theory in fisher's case gives rise to inventory theory of money holding largely for transaction purpose by hook or by crook we come for the transaction value we come for the transaction value this fisher's approach gives rise to inventory theory of money which is mainly concerned with the transaction purpose of goods and services now in cambridge approach this has been developed into portfolio or capital theoretic approach to the monetary demand so what has fisher's theory led to it has led to inventory theory of money and cambridge approach has developed into portfolio or capital theoretical approach to the monetary demand so we come to the end of the article please like and subscribe to my channel you're more than welcome for any requests or any suggestions please feel free to comment in the comment box stay safe stay blessed thank you